Hello, welcome back. We were talking about a bright teenage boy in this chapter, I will do it. Remember? He, with his hard work, perseverance, he had achieved a good rank in the entrance to the IITs. But his father refused to send him to that college, stating their difficult financial situation. Yes? Now let's go ahead and see how this teenage boy did not fret over this particular disappointment that came into his life. Let's read to know what he did. His father was sad that he had to tell his son the bitter truth, but it could not be helped. The boy had to understand reality. Many times our parents do that. They put it to us bluntly, but we have to understand the reality behind their behavior. The teenager was disappointed. It seemed his dreams had burnt into ashes. He was so near to fulfilling his fondest hope. His heart sank in sorrow. Yes, all of us would react like this. Even you would feel the same. Yes or no? But he did not reply. He never shared his unhappiness or helplessness with anybody. He was a kind of an introvert. He kept his feelings to himself. He was an introvert by nature. His heart was bleeding, but he did not get angry with anybody. That is the first thing you should learn here. Listen to what's happening around you. Pay attention. Accept the reality first. There is no point in getting angry with it because reality is the truth. So that's the first thing he did. The day came when all his friends who got through the entrance test were leaving for the college, IIT. His classmate, classmates were leaving for Madras that we call as Chennai today. They were taking a train from Mysore to Madras. They have shared good years in school and college together. So all his batchmates were all excited leaving for IIT. He went to the station to say goodbye and good luck to them for their future life. Now I would like to stress this point here. There are many reasons why this teenage boy went to that station that day to see his, leave, his friends leave for IIT. First thing was he wanted to go and face reality. He wanted to digest the fact that yes, my friends are going, yes, I'm unable to go. Second thing, he wanted to find joy in someone else's joy. He did not want to have hard feelings or feel jealous that his friends got through it, but he couldn't. Yes? And third thing, he went that day to stand in the station to collect his thoughts in order to remove all negativity from him. Let's read. At the station, his friends were already there. They were excited and talking loudly. The noise was like the chirping of birds. They were all excited and discussing their new hostels, new courses, etc. He was not a part of it. He was standing beside silently watching them. So he stood there silently. One of them noticed and said, you should have made it. How come you are not coming to IIT with us? You are the brightest among us. But he just kept quiet. He did not reply. He only wished all of them. He waved at them as the train slowly left the platform. He stood there even after he could no longer see the train or the waving hands. It was the June of 1962 in Mysore city. Monsoon had set in and it was getting dark. It had started to drizzle. Yet he stood there motionless. Why? He was telling himself, yes, my dreams are crashed, but what next? That is the most important part. When you fail, what do you do? Gather your thoughts, gather your senses, your courage, and tell yourself, all right, what should I do next? You know what Henry Ford says? Every time you fail, it is an excellent opportunity to do the same thing again, but more intelligently. So let's see what train of thought this boy had. He said to himself, 
without anger or jealousy. He was not cursing his fate. He was not cursing his family. He was not cursing his friends for being better off than him. All students from IIT study well and do big things in life. He's telling himself, but it is not the institution. Ultimately, it is you and you alone who can change your life by hard work. No matter which college I go to, it is the me who's performing there. It is the me who's achieving. Yes or no? No matter which school you are from, you are the product. So you can mold yourself. It's in your hands. And he told himself that day, it's okay if I can't go to IIT, but wherever I am, I will excel there. Probably he was not aware that he was following the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita. What did Lord Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? Your best friend is yourself and your worst enemy is also yourself. So who can make or mar you? You yourself. So let's see what he did next. Later he worked very hard focused on only one thing, never bothering about his personal comforts or life. He made his aim to become the best and excel wherever he is. He went ahead and founded Infosys, one of the pioneers of information technology in India. He shared his wealth with others. What wealth are we talking about here? This man always believed in bringing up the people around him to his level. He believed that excellence must be shared. You must teach people how to become better in life so that together all of us can become better. That's amazing. That's very generous of him. He never used the help of caste, community or political con connections to grow up in life. No, only his hard work, his perseverance and his intellect those are the only things he used to come up. Often we hear people climbing up the ladder of success using such connections that, that are mentioned here. But he didn't do that. A son of a school teacher showed other Indians it was possible to earn wealth legally and ethically. Legally means in the right way without having to hide how you earn that money and ethically, honestly. He built a team of people who were equally good. How many of you take your fellow mates along with you? When you succeed, you should help everyone succeed along with you. That's how we build a good society. He became a pioneer of India's software industry and started the information technology wave. The most sought after jobs today. Today he has become an icon of simplicity, uncompromising quality. A man so simple that we heard his servants at his home eat at the same table that he and his family eats. How simple. Uncompromising quality. Never stoop in quality. Whatever you give has to be the best. And fairness. Just be good to others. Treat them the way they need to be treated. Give them respect and give them, be fair to them. Apart from being a philanthropist, a philanthropist is a person who spends his time, efforts, or money for social causes, for poor children, for the handicapped, for the disabled, for the deserving. People go and dedicate their lives to up uplift these people. So he was also a philanthropist. He, he really believes in the motto, powered by intellect, driven by values. What is intellect? Doesn't mean intelligence. Intellect is doing the right thing at the right time. Being logical, having good reasoning skills. And of course, driven by values, honesty, integrity. Who is he? The suspense built so long. He is none other than Nagavara Ramarao, Narayana Murthy, the founder of Infosys, a leading IT company in the world. And do you know who wrote this reading about him? His wife, Madam Sudha Murthy. Let's read a little about her. 
She is an equally awesome genius. You must read more about her after this chapter. About the author, Madam Sudha Murthy. She's a wife of Narayan Murthy in, and she's an Indian social worker and author. Murthy began, that means Sudha Murthy Madam, began her professional career as a computer scientist and engineer. She is the chairperson of Infosys Foundation. She has founded several orphanages. Weren't we talking about philanthropy? Several orphanages participated in rural development efforts, supported the movement to provide all Karnataka government schools with computer and library facilities, and established the Murthy Classical Library of India at Harvard University. That is quite an achievement. Murthy also teaches computer science and fiction. The present story is an extract from one of her most successful stories, How I Taught My Grandmother to Read and Other Stories. Keep an eye out in your library. If you do find this book, please read about it. So in the next video, we'll go ahead with the question answers and the grammar section. See you soon.